Alright, hello boys and girls, moms and dads, welcome to Heroes Mono School Academy. This is 5th grade Bible reading, week number 13, and we are going to be reading through the book of Luke in Luke chapter 12 today. And then right after reading Luke chapter 12, we are going to study Luke chapter 12. In other words, we're going to try to understand what are the major topics covered in Luke chapter 12. So please go ahead and get your Bible and turn to Luke chapter 12 and read along with us. Luke chapter 12 In the meantime, when an innumerable multitude of people had gathered together, so that they trampled one another, he began to say to his disciples first of all, Beware of the eleven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. For there is nothing covered that will not be revealed, nor hidden that will not be known. Therefore whatever you have spoken in the dark will be heard in the light, and what you have spoken in the ear in inner rooms will be proclaimed on the housetops. And I say to you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. But I will show you whom you should fear, fear him who, after he has killed, has power to cast into hell, yes, I say to you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two B copper coins? And not one of them is forgotten before God. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. Also I say to you, whoever confesses me before men, him the Son of Man also will confess before the angels of God. But he who denies me before men will be denied before the angels of God. And anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven him, but to him who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven. Now when they bring you to the synagogues and magistrates and authorities, do not worry about how or what you should answer, or what you should say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour what you ought to say. Then one from the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, Man, who made me a judge or an arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take heed and beware of sea covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. Then he spoke a parable to them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, since I have no room to store my crops? So he said, I will do this, I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there I will store all my crops and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have many goods laid up for many years, take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, Fool! This night your soul will be required of you, then whose will those things be which you have provided? So is he who lays up treasure for himself, and is not rich toward God. Then he said to his disciples, Therefore I say to you, Do not worry about your life, what you will eat, nor about the body, what you will put on. Life is more than food, and the body is more than clothing. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which have neither storehouse nor barn, and God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? Twenty-five and which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? If you then are not able to do the least, 
Why are you anxious for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin, and yet I say to you, even Solomon in all his glory was not e arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothes the grass, which today is in the field and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? And do not seek what you should eat or what you should drink, nor have an anxious mind. For all these things the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knows that you need these things. But seek after the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added to you. Do not fear, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell what you have and give alms, provide yourselves money bags which do not grow old, a treasure in the heavens that does not fail, where no thief approaches nor moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Let your waist be girded and your lamps burning, and you yourselves be like men who wait for their master, when he will return from the wedding, that when he comes and knocks they may open to him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the master, when he comes, will find watching. Assuredly, I say to you that he will gird himself and have them sit down to eat, and will come and serve them. And if he should come in the second watch, or come in the third watch, and find them so, blessed are those servants. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would gee have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Forty therefore you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Then Peter said to him, Lord, do you speak this parable only to us, or to all people? And the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward, whom his master will make ruler over his household, to give them their portion of food in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. Truly, I say to you that he will make him ruler over all that he has. But if that servant says in his heart, My master is delaying his coming, and begins to beat the male and female servants, and to eat and drink and be drunk, the master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him, and at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in two and appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. And that servant who knew his master's will, and did not prepare himself or do according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. But he who did not know, yet committed things deserving of stripes, shall be beaten with few. For everyone to whom much is given, from him much will be required, and to whom much has been committed, of him they will ask the more. I came to send fire on the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. But I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how distressed I am till it is accomplished. Do you suppose that I came to give peace on earth? I tell you, not at all, but rather division. For from now on five in one house will be divided, three against two, and two against three. Father will be divided against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Then he also said to the multitudes, Whenever you see a cloud rising out of the west, immediately you say, A shower is coming, and so it is. 
and when you see the south wind blow, you say, there will be hot weather, and there is. Hypocrites. You can discern the face of the sky and of the earth, but how is it you do not discern this time? Yes, and why, even of yourselves, do you not judge what is right? When you go with your adversary to the magistrate, make every effort along the way to settle with him, lest he drag you to the judge, the judge deliver you to the officer, and the officer throw you into prison. I tell you, you shall not depart from there till you have paid the very last mite. All right, hopefully you got a chance to read through Luke chapter 12 with us. So please go ahead and turn your workbook over right now to page number 35 and page number 36 of your workbook. You're going to see over there that Luke chapter 12 may be divided into nine major parts or nine major sections is what we call it. So there's going to be sections 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. All right, section 1 is from verse 1 to verse 3. Um, and in that particular chapter of Luke 12, Jesus warns against hypocrisy. What is hypocrisy? So hypocrisy is asking people to do what you're not doing yourself. And the Bible says, well, that's not a good thing because uh, being hypocritical is going to tell people that, well, I can say something and then do something else. And God doesn't like that. And Jesus calls that attitude like a leaven which is like yeast that you put inside flour and then that yeast is going to spread itself through the entire dough. So Jesus is discouraging hypocrisy because of that. Because if you say something and then you do something else, that's not a good thing. Because you're not teaching the right kind of things. And Jesus says the Pharisees are like that. Beware of hypocrisy. Well, that's section number one. Section number two is from verse four to verse seven. And it talks about how to reverence God. Or out of fear God and he says well don't be afraid of anybody who does not power to put people in hell but the person you need to fear is the person who can kill the physical body and put someone in hell well that means obey God because God can put people who are disobedient in hell we don't want to be like that do we no all right want to be want to be obedient to God so that's from verse number four to verse number seven. And then section number three is talking about making sure that you are not ashamed of the testimony of Jesus. Do not be bashful. Jesus uh, says, if you are uh, afraid or ashamed of me in this present life, then when I get into my kingdom, guess what? I am going to be bashful about you as well. So that's going to be verse number eight and verse number 11. So we don't want to be bashful about our, our testimony about Jesus. We want people to know that we are disciples and followers of the master. All right, section number four is from verse 13 to verse 21. A man, came, a man came over to Jesus and starts asking him to tell his brother to divide inheritances with him. And Jesus tells him, well, you're pretty covetous. You're asking me to tell your brother to divide inheritances with you. Well, he tells people to understand that being rich toward God is the most important thing from that story. Then section number five is going to be from verse 22 to verse 34. Jesus warns his disciples against worrying. In other words, instead of trying to meet your needs by your powers, talk to God about meeting your needs. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness instead of worrying. That's what section five from verse 22 to verse 34 of Luke chapter 12 is talking about. And section 6, the sixth part of this chapter, is going to be from verse 35 to verse 48. And Jesus talks about the story of a faithful servant. Um, and says, if you are faithful, when the master comes over there, the master is going to reward you. But if you're not faithful, they're not going to get any reward for being unfaithful. And section number seven is going to be uh, from verse 49 to verse 53. And that's how Jesus talks about how there are going to be divisions because of the testimony of Jesus. But that division ultimately is going to lead to distinction. So it's not a destructive kind of division. 
is going to be a distinctive kind of division ultimately. In section number 8, uh, from verse 54 to verse 56, Jesus starts to tell people, you guys should understand how to discern the times that we were living in, that they were living in over there. So he talks about if you guys can look at the sky and you can say, well, uh, because the sky is clear, there's not going to be rain. Or if the sky gets to be overcast, there's going to be rain. Well, if you can't interpret the signs of the times, the signs of the skies, why can't you interpret and understand prophetically what's happening in this generation? All right. And section number nine talks about how to make peace, which is going to be from verse 57 to verse 59. And Jesus encourages us to resolve conflicts amicably and not to resort to taking each other to courts, especially before people who do not know God. All right. So let's try to answer a few questions over there. So question number one is, why is hypocrisy dangerous? Well, hypocrisy is dangerous because it is trying to teach people that you can say something and then do something else, the exact opposite. And if that is tolerated, that means everybody's going to be hypocritical. It means nobody's going to be obedient to God and everybody's going to say, we love God, but they're not going to do what God says. That's the danger of hypocrisy. It spreads like leaven. All right, question number two. Instead of worrying, what should the believer do? Well, Jesus talks about it over here. He encourages the believer to trust God by seeking first his kingdom, getting instructions from God to meet our needs. All right, so that's what um, I've got for you today, uh, boys and girls. Week number 13. Luke chapter 12 is what we have read today. Did you get something from it? I sure hope so. Please go ahead and turn to page number 36 and answer those questions using the space provided for you over there. Remember, God cares about you and so do we. Bye-bye. I'll be your hero's body And as you study With heroes born I will be your friend you